We'll start with France's response to Friday's terror attacks in Paris. Police have been carrying out dozens of raids since early Monday morning, arresting suspects and seizing weapons. And French jets have been pounding Raqqa and the Islamic State group's stronghold in the northern Syria. For the latest, we connect to our Connie Kim, standing by the news center. Connie? Daniel, French police seized an arsenal of weapons in dozens of pre-dawn raids against suspects on Monday local time. Now, the raids were focused on the Lyon area where police made five arrests and seized a rocket launcher, an assault rifle, bulletproof vests and handguns. French Prime Minister Emmanuel Valls says there is danger of more terrorist attacks in Europe in the coming days. Now, this comes less than 12 hours after France dropped 20 bombs on Raqqa, the de facto capital for ISIS in Syria. It's seen as the first direct retaliation for the attacks in Paris. A command and control center, a recruitment center, training camp and arms depot run by the extremist group were targeted. The aerial raids were launched from bases in the United Arab Emirates and Jordan on Sunday night local time. There is no word yet on how successful the strikes were, nor if any civilians were killed. Uh, this comes as the ISIS group took responsibility for the Paris attacks that killed 129 people and injured hundreds more, many critically. A massive international manhunt is underway for a Belgium-born French national, Abdeslam Salah, who is believed to have been involved. And according to CNN, the 26-year-old was questioned by French police shortly after the attacks, but was not detained. A total of six attackers detonated their suicide belts, killing themselves. Two of the attackers have been identified, a 29-year-old French national, Ismail Mustafai. He was apparently known to France's security services, but had never been charged with any terrorism offenses. The other is Bilal Hafti, a Belgian resident who is either 19 or 20. It's believed he fought in Syria before coming to France. Well, it's important to grieve for the victims, uh, but just as important is bouncing back up and resuming normal functions to deprive the twisted terrorists from any satisfaction. Connie, I hear museums and other cultural spots will be opening soon. Right, Daniel, with Paris slowly beginning to get back to normal after Friday's deadly attacks, the country's culture ministry said museums and landmarks, including the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower, will reopen 1 p.m. Monday local time. But as you can see from the video footage of the memorial service at Paris's iconic Notre Dame Cathedral on Sunday, it'll definitely take, take time for people in Paris to carry on with their daily lives. I think of the families today who are in mourning and distress. And I came to pray at Notre Dame for the peace of these poor people who are now dead and their families who are in pain and sadness. I wish I could say we have to find a solution. I don't even know what that could be, but we have to come together and at least support each other. In Korea, the country's vice foreign minister Im Sung Nam visited the French embassy in Seoul on Monday to express Korea's condolences. The embassy has also been seeing regular folk come by as well to pay their respects. A Parisian living in Korea says he's touched to see the support for France. The first feeling is a sadness. We are very sad what happened to the country we loved. We are very happy to see all the our people who support us from all the countries. Uh, I'm very touched to see that we are not alone. Vigils are being held around the world, and iconic buildings in Shanghai, New York, and San Francisco have been lit up in blue, white, and red, the colors of the French flag. In cities around the world, people are united, praying for Paris. Daniel, that's all I have for now. We'll have more updates in our later newscast.